Exodus chapter 27. That was message number one. Look at verse number 20. Here the Lord is instructing Moses and giving Moses commands for the law and how Israel is to worship God. Can I say during the, under the law and during Old Testament worship there was a lot of ceremony that will end along with worship. Can I say in the church everything's to be done in decent and in order but everything that was done in the tabernacle in the temple the Old Testament was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ or the working of the Holy Spirit and can I say in the New Testament we are the temple of God and the Lord is he lives within us and we are to come and worship him in spirit and in truth but we can glean from the pictures under the Old Testament economy and see uh, some things concerning today. And I'm interested in verse number 20 of Exodus 27. The Bible says, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure olive oil beaten for the light and to cause the lamp to burn always. And the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his son shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on behalf of the children of Israel. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Thank you for these young people, and the burden they brought back from camp. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would continue to do a work in their hearts and their lives. I pray you to insulate their minds from the filth of this world. I pray they'd hide the word of God in their hearts that they might not sin against thee. I pray that you'd use their generation to change our generation. God, I thank you for the good testimonies. I thank you for hearing and answering prayer. I thank you for being a great God. Thank you for the precious promises in the word of God. Now, Father, thank you for the cross and for Calvary. Lord, what you've done for us when you bled and died for our sins. Uh, God, thank you, Lord, for the church. And thank you, Lord, for the gospel being spread throughout the world. Uh, Lord, if people in yesteryear had been faithful, we may have never had the gospel here in America. God, we'd been raised without the truth of the cross of Calvary, without the gospel. And God, we would have died and went to hell. God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for folks that submit their lives to the gospel. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us tonight. Use this unworthy vessel once again. Speak to your, the hearts of your people. Edify the saints of God. Uh, encourage them in the good things of God. Uh, may the Lord Jesus be high and lifted up. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd bind the powers of hell. Uh, I pray no one would grieve or quench the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I pray, God, you'd do a work around here tonight. Father, I certainly pray if anybody's lost without Christ, tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray if anybody's doubting their salvation, you'd give them confirmation or you'd convict them they're not saved. Uh, God, I certainly do pray that, God, if there's anybody here uh, needing something special from heaven, God, you'd reveal it uh, Father, I do pray for the sick and afflicted. I pray for Brother Bobby. I pray for Brother Sidney. Uh, I pray for Miss Janet's niece's grandson in the hospital in UK. Uh, God, I pray for Miss Jessie's family. You'd comfort them and help them. I pray for this young lady's family that died out there on the highway last week, just 19 years of age, driving down the road. Uh, never knew that was going to be the end of her life. Uh, God, I pray for her family. I pray if any in that family it's not saved through this tr terrible tragedy, they'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Uh, God, I pray your perfect will be done now, uh, and we'll bless you and praise you for it, for it's in the wonderful, the glorious uh, and the holy name of the Lord Jesus, we ask it all. Amen and amen. We find in these verses, uh, first of all, command. The Bible says, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring the pure oil, uh, pure oil, olive beaten for the light. You see, God made a commandment for the tabernacle and what would become the temple, that the light in the temple would never go out. Can I say that you understood uh, 
the way the house of God was, there's a brazen altar outside. Uh, then you'd come into the holy place uh, where the table of showbread was, where the candlestick was, uh, uh, and uh, where the priest would minister. And then there was the great veil. And uh, on the other side of the veil was the most holy place, uh, or the place we refer to as the Holy of Holies. Uh, and there's where the Ark of the Covenant sat, uh, the testimony uh, of what God had done for them. In the Ark was... Uh, 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 the Ten Commandments that m uh, God had carved out of stones. Uh, there was a, a pot of manna and there was the rod that budded to prove that Aaron's uh, uh, priest, uh, his Le Levitical line, uh, uh, his sons and their sons after them would serve and minister in the temple. And part of their ministerial work was to make sure the light never went out in the temple. Can I say, I wonder... How many churches the lights have went out on? Mm, we see the command. We see the cause. Look again in verse 20. To cause the lamp to burn always. Let me ask you this. Is your lamp burning? Mm. And then notice it's to be continual. Look what it says in verse 21. In the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his son shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on behalf of the children of Israel. I see a lot of folks, uh, we have a good service like this morning, and boy, they'll burn. But come next week, they'll burn out. I've seen in revival meeting people get in the altar and they make comments, I'm going to live for God from this day forward. Uh, I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But before the next revival meeting comes along, they're long quit on God. Even in camp meeting, I see people get excited. But before the next week's over, their excitement's gone. And we see it's to be continual. Now give me some, let me give you a few things about the oil. It mentions here something about this pure olive oil. Can I say, first of all, it was to be pure. It was not to be mixed with anything else. You see, back then, uh, the process of uh, obtaining uh, uh, certain things, whether it was uh, 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 the fruit of the vine uh, or whether it was from olives uh, and getting the oil, uh, they'd put it in a large vat with a press uh, and uh, uh, they'd press out the juices uh, uh, from those fruits. Uh, and can I say that if uh, you were orchard, you was a very wealthy person, uh, and a, uh, olive oil was a great commodity. It was not only used uh, in the temple, uh, it was also used to mollify wounds. Uh, it was used uh, uh, in other medicinal purposes. It was used for complexion. Uh, it was used in cooking. Uh, uh, olive oil, uh, even still in the Middle East, is a great, great commodity. Here we find it's to be pure olive oil. Now, I don't know about you, but if you use something and you used it for, for grapes and you used it for olives and you used it for other things, uh, if you didn't clean that vat out real good, there might be some residue left of something else. Can I say the olive oil was not to be mixed with, with uh, grapes? It wasn't to be mixed with water? It wasn't to be mixed with anything else? It was to be pure. You know what's wrong with a lot of people? Their oil's been watered down. Hmm? I don't mean to be ugly, but it's just my nature. There's nothing wrong with listening to preaching and, and watching preachers online. I do it. I know you do it. You listen to podcasts. You watch YouTube. You see how, But you better be careful what you watch and listen to. You might water down your oil. I've heard people say, well, I can get something out of Joe Olstein. I can too. I can get a nap. Amen. I once had a fellow tell me, well, I like watching the Catholic Network so I can learn. You know where I learn? I learn from the Scriptures. That fellow in the dress with his collar turned around backwards isn't going to teach me much. But you know who will? Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea, John, Mark, Luke. Are you listening? They're good teachers. Paul, they're real good teachers. Hmm? Better watch it. You might get your oil watered down. 
It's to be pure olive oil. Uh, but not only that, I want you to notice the process. Look what it says. The Bible says that they bring the pure olive, oil olive beaten for the light. Do you see that? It was to be beaten oil, not pressed oil. And can I say that beaten oil is different? I mentioned a moment ago that they put olives in this vat and they'd use a press and the press would press down on the, on the uh, olive uh, and the oil would run out, it'd run down a trough and they would collect it. But God says, that's not the oil I want. I want oil that's beaten. Hmm? Can I say our darling Savior was beaten beyond recognition? And the oil we need needs to come from Him. I say what He's talking about here. He's talking about instead of going and collecting olives off of the tree and putting them in the vat, He's requesting olives that have fallen to the ground and become bruised. And when they become bruised, the skin is broken and the oil comes forth naturally. Can I say God is interested in natural things, not man-made things? If you go and study how an altar was be con uh, constructed, uh, he wanted stones where never anything had chipped them or an axe had never been used on them or a hoe hadn't been used on them. He wanted natural stones in order to build an, uh, an altar. Uh, can I say he wanted olive oil uh, that he allowed to be bruised, uh, that there was an opening where it naturally came out, uh, where it was never a work of man. Can I say God is never interested in the works of man? Uh, all of our righteousness is filthy rags, uh, and not by works that we have done, but by the righteousness of His only Son. That's all God is pleased with, uh, the work of Jesus Christ, not our works. Uh, and can I say He wanted that bruised olive? And can I say Jesus was bruised on Calvary for you and I and the Lord? was pleased to bruise him that you and I might be saved. Can I say we see it was to be pure oil, not mixed with anything else, but it was also to be beaten olives, the process of it. And we see its purpose was to bring forth light. Can I say the oil is always a picture of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God. And when you got born again, the Holy Spirit sealed you unto the day of redemption. I love that. I've used that analogy many a times, uh, but I love it. Uh, I, I, I used to not understand it. Uh, uh, Aunt Lynn, when Ma was in the kitchen, had both them ovens going, them big old pressure cookers, uh, no air conditioning, 400 degrees in there uh, during the summer. Didn't understand why them mason jars full of them green beans that I had to help pick and help snap, uh, and I hated every moment of that. Uh, uh, why she was uh, 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 in that kitchen toiling over that. Uh, but uh, there's something about that pressure cooker on that mason jar. Uh, she'd put them green beans in there. Uh, she'd put that water in that mason jar. She'd put a little salt in there. Uh, but hey, uh, when those things became sealed, the top of that mason jar would pop uh, and she could have put them in the garage. Uh, she could have went out and buried them in the backyard, uh, dug them up uh, 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 50 years later, uh, uh, pop that seal, uh, them green beans was as fresh as the day she put them in there, uh, and hey uh, this old flesh has failed the grace of God many times uh, but the day Jesus saved me some 49 years ago, uh, I was sealed by the Holy Spirit of God uh, hey, that inner man sinneth no more, uh, one of these days the Lord's going to pop the top of this thing off, uh, I'm going to lay down this incorruptible uh, or this corruptible uh, and put on in corruption. Uh, I'm going to glory. Uh, get a body fashioned like the Son of God uh, uh, because I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of God uh, and I bless His holy name. Uh, but He sealed us not only to save us but He indwells us to lead us and guide us in all truth. 
One of his office works is that he would bring all things to our remembrance. You ever been witnessing to somebody and uh, he brings out of you some verses you don't even remember you've read? Uh, how did that happen? Because the author of the Word of God lives in you uh, and he brings that forth. Uh, but he also lives in us. And what Paul said that we're to work out our own salvation. He did not say work to be saved. But that which God has placed in us, we need to let it work out of our lives so others can see the light of Jesus Christ in us. I want to preach on this. I want to preach on, are you low on oil? Are you low on oil? Now, I have three vehicles at the foster estate. The smallest engine I have is a 5.7 liter. I do not believe in four cylinders or six cylinders. I want something when I punch it, it punches back. Now, if you got a four cylinder, six cylinder, have at it. You say, well, I don't want to pay for all that gas. I don't either, but I do. But Miss Mary, because you say I don't pick on you anymore, so now's your shot. If I take one of them big V8s, and I let the oil drain out of that thing. It don't know. It don't matter how many horsepowers in it. It's not going very far. There's something else, brother Donald. If I don't get that oil changed every once in a while, there are impurities that get in that oil. There are pieces. Uh, 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 that come through that oil filter and there are things you know more about engines than me you ought to be preaching this but there are there are, are, are metal fragments all kinds of things that comes from that engine uh, that if you don't keep that oil changed uh, it'll break down your engine's power and you can't throw a rod you know why some people are out of the house of God they didn't keep their oil fresh and they blew a rod I'm not talking about you got blown. <laughs> but there's times I worry about you. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate huh? the word. Okay, good. Huh? We need oil so Rod keeps plugging along. But what, I'm, I, what I'm interested in is how's your oil level tonight? Hmm? You see, when the oil's right, you're shining bright. Yeah. Amen. Um, but I know a little bit about kerosene lamps. You know, I haven't seen one in 50 years, but I can still... Isn't that amazing? Uh, those things stunk. Uh, when they tried to dress them up, they'd put something in them, make them green and red. I don't know what they put in them. But, you know, you'd, you'd have to trim those wicks. If not, they wouldn't always light. But you'd light that kerosene light, lamp, and, and it burned for a while, but if you didn't take that globe off and clean it off... You didn't see the light. Amen. And some of you got oil in you, but you're not shining real bright because some things have happened. I'm just asking, are you low on oil? Man, let me give you a few things. We'll go to the house because some of you are already pouting. Can I say tonight, you know you're low on oil if you're not faithful. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, I've heard people that aren't faithful argue this way, preacher. say, well, I'm not a man of God, so I'm not a steward. But if you're saved, you're a steward of the Holy Ghost. And you're also to be a steward of the Word of God, where to study it, where to make ourselves where we're not ashamed. Uh, uh, but if you're not faithful... Your oil's not right. Hmm? Listen, not everybody's called to preach. Not everybody's got a talent to play an instrument. Not everybody's got a talent to sing. But everybody can be faithful. Everybody can be faithful to pray. Everybody can be faithful to seek God's face. And if your health is able, you ought to be faithful to the house of God. Uh, now God understands if you're providentially hindered. He understands if you've got a job that you can't come to the church. There's a difference between can't coming and not wanting to. But I'm telling you, if you're not faithful, you've got an oil problem. 
The Bible also says in Luke 16, 10, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Uh, he that is unjust in the least uh, is unjust also in much. Uh, Brother Ron, I promise you this, folks that aren't faithful to church also aren't faithful to pray and they aren't faithful to read the Word of God. Yeah. If you're not faithful in the least things, you'll never be faithful in, in those things that are, that are great. Hmm? I'm telling you, if you're, if you're low in oil, you've got a faithful problem. Hmm? You're not faithful. Can I say this? Uh, you'll be low on oil if you're frugal. Boy, that got exciting, wasn't it? Uh, you're frugal. You say, what does that mean? That means you're tired. Hmm? Huh? You say, give me chapter and verse for that. I'm glad you asked. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Uh, I want to tell you, your oil shows out uh, uh, when God realizes how much you give. Uh, you ought to give of your time, you ought to give of your talent, uh, you ought to give of your treasure, your, uh, I mean, what God's prospered you with, uh, you didn't deserve it. Uh, it's a thrill to give back to God. Uh, and I promise you this, you can't outgive Him. Uh, uh, the more you give to Him, the more He gives to you. Uh, I don't give to get, uh, but I have never found a time where I could outgive Him. Uh, God's always been faithful. Uh, he's met every need. Uh, he's met many of my wants and desires. Uh, I want to tell you, if you're frugal, you got an oil problem. Hmm? Yeah, you do. It is good, Brother Phil. Thank you. Whether I said it or not. Uh, God honors faithfulness, and He honors giving. Uh, I'm glad I'm part of a giving church. Uh, I'm glad we support the missionaries. We're able to support the missionaries. I'm glad I'm able to say, let's give Brother Sidney $3,000 like we did this morning. Everybody said, yeah, let's do it. I'm glad we're able to do that. Uh, I'm glad uh, we got folks uh, that not only give a tithe, uh, but they give a tithe and an offering, uh, and many times go beyond that uh, and give sacrificially uh, because they want to honor God with what God's blessed them with. Uh, I know that was popular. It's always popular when you get on money. But it's true. It's true. If you're frugal, you've got an oil problem. Can I say this? You've got an oil problem if you're filthy. I mentioned about that kerosene lamp being dirty and you can't see the light. That don't mean there's no light in there. There's just a filthy problem keeping others from seeing it. Can I say there's a lot of folks that come to the house of God, but yet they're filthy. They're filthy minded. They're filthy mouthed. They're filthy in the, their desires. And can I say uh, that ought to not be named amongst Christians? You know, they were first called Christians because they were Christ like. We're called Christian today out of just something that, you know, because we're churchgoers. You know, Miss Annette and I had to go out to this afternoon. We were still in our church clothes, uh, and people looked at us like we was freaks. I told Miss Annette, because they're not used to seeing people dressed up anymore. Uh, I remember a time on Sunday, everybody was dressed up. They wore, we used to call it our Sunday best. Uh, why is that? Because most people have allowed their standards to fall to the world's standards. Hmm. We're to set the example. We're to be Christ-like. Uh, but see, if you're filthy, you're not Christ-like. Preacher, give me something on being filthy. Okay, I will. Colossians chapter 3 says this, verse number 8. But now ye also put off all these. And by the way, let me say this. God's not going to take it away from you. God expects you to do what you can do, and then He does for us what we can't do for ourselves. But there are some things God expects us to do, us to put away. By the way, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, He told them to roll back the stone. Jesus didn't put the stone over the grave, and He wasn't going to remove it. Uh, there are a lot of things you've allowed in your life you want God to take away. He'll help you once you start moving them out of your life. Uh, 
The Bible says, now ye also put off all these. Anger, uh-oh. Wrath, uh-oh. Malice, uh-oh. Blasphemy, filthy communication out of your own mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you put off the old man with his deeds, uh, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, uh, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, there's some things to put off, but there's some things to put on. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another. That means put up with somebody even if you don't like them, huh? Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, even if any man that have quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, uh, and let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. When you're filthy, you hadn't put off some things, hadn't put on some things, you're not going to shine very bright. You know what really Jesus really commanded us to do? To let our light so shine that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We're to shine our light. But if your oil's not right, if you're filthy, you won't shine. Can I say this? You might have an oil problem if you're flighty. You say, what do you mean? Well, the Bible says in Ephesians 4.14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness uh, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. There are some people that are flighty. They don't know what they believe and they're flying around believing everything anybody says. I once knew a man that if somebody told him he was a Christian, he just believed, well, they're a Christian, they told me so. Well, I could tell you that I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, seven feet tall and play in the NBA. That don't make it so. Huh? But there are some people just believe everything they hear. They're naive. They're flighty. They'll listen to one preacher that says you can lose their salvation. They believe that. They listen to another preacher that says you've got to speak in tongues to be saved. They believe that. They listen to me and they say, what in the world is he trying to say with that hacking thing he does? huh?" But there are people who are flighty. That ain't a hack. That's me trying to breathe. Huh? You know, and the older I get, it's harder to breathe. But there are some people that are flighty. You've got an oil, you know, you're flighty, you've got an oil problem. Listen, here's the dangerous thing. And I'm not going to pick on you, Xander, but I'm going to pick on you, all right? I know you had a real issue with doubt. That was a real issue. And, and I'm glad you got that set up. Here's the problem with some people. Some people have been saved by the grace of God. But Brother Ron, they've allowed their oil to get low. And then we have a meeting. We have a preacher come in, and he's preaching the paint off the walls, and they see Phil acting foolish, and they see folks excited, and they see folks testifying, they see folks uh, 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 just uh, just got a glow about them. And they get to thinking, "Well, I'm not that. I must not be saved." And then they're coming and asking God to save them, but He's already saved them. So what they're doing, Miss Marcy, they're actually grieving the Holy Ghost because he lives in them and he, they are denying him saying, I need you to save me when he's already there. You don't have a salvation problem, you've got an oil problem. Hmm. Can I say this? There are some people that have an oil problem because they're frozen. Now I don't know much about diesel engines. Brother Bob could educate me. Used to, they had a glow plug. If you didn't keep that thing warm in the winter, you'd go try to crank that thing, and it wouldn't crank because it was frozen. Some of you can't get cranked up because you're frozen. It's not because there's no oil in the engine. You've just gotten frozen. The oil can't do its job. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 24, 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax, wax cold. 
Now listen, there's a difference between sin and iniquity. Sin is the transgression of the law. For him to not to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Iniquity is unequal dealing with God. You see, when the world gets more of our attention than God does, we have iniquity in our life. You know why these young people are tore up? Because they went down to camp and they realized they've, they've, they spend most of their time doing things that don't matter when it comes to eternity. And it was revealed to them that broke their heart. And they're praying and asking God to keep the fire burning in their soul. They want the oil to continue doing its job so they can shine. See, if you're not careful, you'll get cold on God. Can I say this? You can get cold on God sitting on a church pew. All you have to do is just ignore what God's saying through the messages. Ignore when the Holy Spirit's dealing with your heart. And you come into the house of God and sing the songs but don't mean it from your heart. You just start getting colder and colder and colder. Say, so how do you know I've been there? Huh? I've been in church faithful, giving my tithe, going out on visitation, uh, sitting there listening to the pastor preach cold as ice. Hmm. It's an oil problem. I say you may have an oil problem. Your oil may be too low. You may have a problem with your oil if you become fainted. There's a lot of people, they fainted towards the things of God. I told Miss Annette I got a, a book. I haven't read it, but I am going to read it. But I've already got a thought for a message just from the title. The title's called The Wolf in Their Pocket. That little thing we carry around that we used to make phone calls on, that very few people make phone calls on anymore, it takes so much of our time and attention away from the things of God, it's become a wolf in sheep's clothing. There's nothing wrong with the phone if it's used right. Problem is most people don't use it right. They'll come beat their chest. Well, preacher, I can watch preaching on that. Why, why don't you? Hmm. People become fainted. Your oil gets so low. I'm not talking about that oil to save you. I'm talking about that, that oil that causes you to shine. It's been replaced with other things that cause you to faint. The Bible says in Psalms 107, verse 5, Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Hosea 11, 7, And my people are bent to backsliding from me, though they called them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. I told my Sunday school class, Ezekiel and Isaiah both prophesied this, but Jesus quoted them when he said, With your lips you do honor me, but your heart is far from me. There's folks who are fainted. I don't know about you. That's why I need to come back to church on Sunday night. That's why I need to be here Wednesday night. That's why I need to get in revival meetings. That's why I need to get in camp meetings. I need the oil burning. Hmm. I said this morning, this book will keep me away from sin, but sin will keep me away from this book. I need preaching. I need worship. I need the things of God. I need church. If not, I'd faint. Hmm? So I quit watching the news about two and a half years ago. It was vexing me. Uh, all the lies that the media was putting out and the spin they'd put on it, just to give you a little bite to give you some hope. They was controlling me. They was controlling you got vexed over it. I had to get rid of it. It caused me to faint. I found myself putting trust in places other than the Lord. It caused you to faint. Hmm? Some of you trust your boss man more than you do Jesus. Who do you think gave you his job? Some of you trust the strength of your own hands more than you do Jesus. Let me help you with that. And you start getting old like me, your strength starts fading. Hmm? Uh, Colonel and Brother Bob both asked me today if I went and got a nap this afternoon. I said, yeah, I used to. I'd take a nap because I'd stay up late on Saturday. By the way, I wasn't watching Saturday Night Live. I was studying. 
I'd stay up late and I'd take a nap on Sunday afternoon. Now I take a nap because I have to. Huh? Get done preaching to a bunch of Baptists, I gotta go lay down. When you get old, you'll figure that out. I used to wonder why my granddaddy was a preacher. I always had to take a nap. I always wondered why he always want me to come around and he'd go off to bed. I know now. Listen, I just got one question for you tonight. Is it time for an oil check? You got pure oil in your lamp? Is your oil to the limit where it's supposed to be? Are you firing on all cylinders? Are you shining for Jesus? There's a lost and dying world out here. They lump us all in the same boat. It don't matter what flavor or denomination that's out there. They, they just put us all in the same boat. And when one shows itself to be false, they think we're all false. They think we're all hypocrites. They think we all are, are lunatics and out of our minds. You know what would solve that problem? If we just shine. Amen. If we just be the lighthouse we're supposed to be. I don't have to uh, run a campaign on, the, on why Crossroads or Vineyard or First Church or any of them is not the place to go. All I need to do is shine for Jesus. Let them see the difference. You know what the world really is looking for? Something real. They're just looking for something real. All they think about Baptists is that we don't have any fun. Uh, let them hang around Phil for about 10 minutes. That'll change their mind. I'll be honest with you, I, I'm having the time of my life being saved. The older I get, I'm more worn out than I used to be, but I'm still having a good time. But I need to convey that to them. Can I say, I've, I've got friends, they don't, they don't go to church, some of them raised in church, they think I'm the craziest preacher they know. And that's okay. What they're really saying is, he's not like other people, he has a good time. And I do. We ought to show the world we're happy, happy, happy. Sure. And look, I see most of your faces every Sunday. Some of you don't look happy, happy, happy. Some of you depressed the far out of me. How's your oil? Huh? How's your oil? Now here's the question. How's your oil? Do you need an oil check? Now... I can go get in that truck, or I can go get in my car, go get in Miss Nett's SUV, and I can pull out what they call a dipstick, and I'll leave that alone right there. And it'll tell me what my oil level is. You see, spiritually, we don't have a dipstick in the back of our neck. We can pull it out. But we do have a Bible. And we do have the Holy Ghost living in us. And the Bible lets us know that if we'll judge ourselves, we won't be judged. And we can get in the Bible and we can ask God or we can get on our face before God and ask God, Lord, what's my oil level? But can I, can I help you with this? Brother Daniel, I haven't picked on you all day. Let me help you with this. Most people here tonight that's got an oil problem, they don't have to ask God. They already know it. He's already revealed it to some of you tonight. You're not what you should be. Well, here's a good chance for you to get to be what you should be. Just get in the altar and ask God to help you with your oil problem. He will. Ask him to help you to shine again. Do like David did in Psalm 51. Ask the Lord to re restore unto you the joy of thy salvation. Salvation's of the Lord. It's his. Ask him to restore that joy. And to help your oil problem. Huh? You need a sp spiritual oil check tonight. And some of you might need that old whatever you've been hanging on to drained and some fresh, fresh oil put in. You know, uh, I believe it's Psalms 133 talks about uh, the oil that the anointed Aaron flowed off his beard and down into the hem of his skirt. Some of you just need some fresh oil tonight. It'll help you run better this week, and it'll certainly help you shine better. So how's your oil tonight? Why don't you leave out of here? Shining for Jesus. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation.
Kids used to sing that song, Is There Oil Burning, Burning, Burning? Uh, kids used to sing the song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine. I wonder how's your oil tonight. Some are coming, they're getting a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the illustration of that pure oil you, you required for the temple. And God, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God, we should have pure oil shining to the testimony of the greatness of our God. Now, Lord, I realize any one of us are subject to allow things to come in our lives, to dilute that which you put in us. So God, help us. Help us do a constant mm, checking of our oil. Help us to die daily like the Apostle Paul did. And God, so you'll get glory from our lives and so that others can see what we have is real. And God, we might see many come to Christ. Father, bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Have your way. Certainly, if somebody's not saved, no, it wasn't a salvation message, but I know the Holy Spirit can do anything. I pray He'd speak to that lost person. We'd see somebody birthed into the family of God. Bless now. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.